everybody. Welcome back to The Silver Lining. I'm again here to bring to you some healing stories about others who have gotten better from Lyme and tick-borne illness because I feel very passionate about spreading hope and letting you know that it is possible to heal. So I feel that the more stories I can share with you about those who have gotten better, the more hope that I can bring to you in that you yourself can heal as well. I have so many different guests and so many different stories. And I was just talking to my guest today, Sandra about how many different variations of Lyme and tick-borne illness there are, how many different representations it takes and forms in different people. And so her story is another unique story and it is um, a shame in a sense that you'll hear her, her talk a little bit more, but just it took a little bit of time for her to get a diagnosis too, which can be unfortunately pretty common in the Lyme and tick-borne world. And that's another reason, again, to listen to these stories because maybe some of them will resonate with you as a listener about some unanswered health challenges that you might be facing. Or again, I like to share a bit more about how these individuals have gotten better so that maybe it will give you some insight into healing yourself as well. But without further ado, today's guest, I have Sandra Portlock, and she's joining us from Florida. She's going to share with us again a little bit more about her story with Lyme and tick-borne illness and how she has found herself in a place closer to remission. So Sandra, if you don't mind, please, um, I welcome you to our show here. If you could just share a little bit more about yourself, who you are, and how you became involved in this space, because I know... For you, you've been in, in the Lyme world now for a good number of decades or 15, 20 years. So yes, and very no true. stranger to this story. Unfortunately not. I do have a silver lining to my story, but it's very different than a lot of stories. And and knowing that, you know, being having Lyme disease for 15 years and being undiagnosed for two years, which is not common. I try and keep my screen on. There it is. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, um, what happened to me was we went to Tennessee and, um, well, let me go a little bit further. Um, I grew up in Long Island, so I had heard about Lyme disease um, back in the 70s, I guess when it first became, you know, Lyme disease from Lyme, Connecticut. And the strange thing is I lived not far from, well, I lived on Long Island, but not far from Montauk Point. So I didn't even know about Plum Island back then, but, um, you know, there's different um, conspiracy theories from Jesse Ventura about it. Um, so it's it's really interesting, the start of it. And we had a friend before he passed, had done a documentary, very, very well um, researched documentary about all of this with Plum Island. And it was never really shared to the best of its ability. He did a lot of Lyme events for us and his name was Wayne Breeden and um, his kids are proud of him because he really did help a lot of people, not just with Lyme disease, but a lot of different, you know, issues, um, ailments. <clears throat> Most of them probably could have been maybe Lyme disease for all we know, but anyway, so I'll go back to my story growing up in Long Island. I, knew about it um in my first marriage and then um never had any symptoms or anything moved to florida and uh we went to tennessee we were looking at purchasing property and we did and we had thought that it was maybe from the property because the neighbor had told us about lyme disease and told us how to what to do tuck your pants into your socks wear you know white socks spray around your feet um, wear a hat um, everything else. So we had walked the property. It was about five, a little over five acres and it was beautiful. And, um, I don't think that's where we got it. Anne. I think we had stayed at the state park at Chattanooga in Chattanooga. And, um, that's where I think we got it. Cause I remember there were cabins and the cabin we had was looking over a lake and I'll back up just one more step. Um, when we had drove in, there were a lot of deer that were crossing the road and they were all friendly deer. Um, it was, you know, just like going through a field of butterflies. It was just, but they were deer and they didn't bother you. So we had our dog with us and her name was Savannah. And um, she ended up getting, um, I guess, really bad arthritis in her back legs. So I think that's probably was Lyme disease and I never knew it. 
now to fast forward, um, because I know time is, you know, um, important here. So uh, I'll try and get everything in. Um, So anyway, so uh, where was I? This is another thing with Lyme disease. And I've had a rough month because with full moons, a lot of Lyme people know that full moons are very hard on you. And a lot of people know that not even having Lyme disease um, know the same thing. And this last month was really hard due to stress, um, which is another big thing. So um, I'll get to the main point. After finding out I had Lyme disease um, through a mutual friend and just doing research, which is how most people with Lyme disease do find out they have it. Um, So I've talked to a lot of people. Um, I advocate about um, not just Lyme disease, but I'm in the process of writing a book. What happened um, a few years back, back in October, I think it was 2020, um, I got catfished, which I was telling you about what it was um, um, by Johnny Depp. I don't know if I could say that. I guess it's your podcast. So, you know, you can make that decision. Um, but anyway, um, so catfishing is just reaching out to a celebrity on TikTok is where it all started. And, you know, I'm still on TikTok because I do a lot of um, videos to teach about Lyme disease and just my own personal photos. Uh, a lot of stuff I see is is not nice on TikTok. So you just kind of filter it out. But anyway, so um, catfishing is basically... Um, when you reach out to a celebrity and my niece, I was telling you, had known Johnny Depp because she graduated with his niece. And I know this doesn't make sense right now because this is all part leading up to um, how I went into, I'd say, maybe 80 to almost 100 percent remission at times. Um, so um, what happened is when I got catfished, um, he reached back out to me because I was trying to find out the validity of this story of my niece knowing Johnny Depp. And um, I ended up reaching someone that was pretending to be him. Um, and with this being Halloween, it's almost like trick or treat because, you know, you, you think you're talking to a celebrity and I never thought of him as you know, a celebrity. I never even really watched his movies. Um, And then after, afterwards, I mean, when we thought we had known who he was, we had watched um, Pirates of the Caribbean as a family. And it was funny because, you know, it was like, I never thought of him as a celebrity, but just as a person. And that's really how we should think of everyone is just, we're just, you know, we're all the same. Doesn't matter, you know, about our backgrounds. So anyway, um, when I got catfished, um, and please, if you don't understand about catfishing, you know, you can ask me any questions and, you know, I'm like an open book. And like I said, I am writing a book about this. So I'm already on, I've been handwriting it page 30, but with not feeling good, I just have not gotten, I want to go to the library because my computer doesn't work in printer. So that way I've already talked to a publisher. I've sent her, um, uh, screenshots of everything and she liked everything and it's a very interesting subject because a lot of people do not understand what it is today so um bringing this kind of full circle this is what happened um with my Lyme disease I got catfished and it took my focus off my disease and put it on me so then I just turned 60 and I'm always told I look younger and I lost weight. Um, it just basically changed me as a person because, you know, not having symptoms, any symptoms after 15 years is like, and I've been on a lot of different protocols. So anyway, that's kind of the whole thing. Um, did you have any questions, Anne? Yeah, I was kind of curious, like, what did you do to really help yourself heal? So you said that you did a lot of different protocols and stuff. And then in this instance, like specifically, um, was there something that you feel put you into remission? um, Or was it just a lot of the different things over time that helped? 
Um, you know, everything kind of ha- was like a piece of the puzzle. It just chipped away at it, but that's all it did for me. Not to say that's what it's going to do for someone else, but, you know, I'm pretty involved in the Lyme community or I have been, um, the last few years have been ca- kind of different for me, um, with this new story I have. Um, but I would say what worked for me the best and was, um, and I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but it was very cost effective, kind of. Um, but getting catfish is what worked for me. And that's why it's so unique because it's, it, it involved no medicine. Well, we lost some money, but the money we lost in treatments over 15 years was far greater. So, you know, I counted a blessing in a lot of ways. So then are you feeling like because of the catfishing, it just sort of took your focus off of the sickness and then the sickness sort of resolved itself? It's like a divine healing. That's exactly true. That's exactly what happened. Okay. I didn't even realize it was happening or it had happened. Um, I, I mean, it goes as far as I thought he was coming to get me from our local airport with in a, in a private jet. It was a little different in the very beginning. It was going to be just like a meet and greet. It was going to be more formal. And then as we became, um, you know, more involved friends, you know, um, through TikTok. So, you know, anybody that you're on TikTok, just be careful and don't reach out to anybody. Because I even have like Sam Elliott, um, uh, Steven Tyler. I mean, I get a lot of people wanting to catfish and what... I realized is now we think it all started during COVID, but I think it goes further back than, than that. Even Lyme disease, we don't really know when it started. So um, anyway, don't get um, reach out to any of these people that you think, Oh, okay, cool. It'd be nice to, you know, know this person because they're famous. Don't do it because they're not. It definitely is not. I mean, with my situation, a little bit different, um, but I realized it wasn't really him that I was talking to after the fact. And my niece, probably that she said that she had um, seen him several times, that it he never knew knew it was her. He never knew who she was. I mean, as far as he knew, she was just another friend, uh, you know, girlfriend coming in the house. Um, so they'd never interacted. And so there was really no story to ever begin with. And this is why my family does not talk to me because when they found out what happened, they were really mad that I tried to reach out to his niece. So I I just now have my sister-in-law that's reaching back out to me finally, because my niece has, um, cancer in her eye or they're studying it. I'm not sure really what's going on, but, um, so it just was a um, very unique experience. Um, I mean, I can't say it was the worst, um, but it definitely is very hard on the family. Yeah. And so speaking of that, though, I know you had mentioned to me prior mm-hmm. to us starting here, but that your your son and your husband were also infected. Is that correct? That is correct. A lot of families, that's a, that is the case, and doctors don't realize that. I mean, I've even talked to doctors and tried to explain to them about Lyme disease and the movie Under Our Skin, which is hard to, you can't even pull it up on YouTube or um, Netflix anymore. But I've got copies of it. So, I mean, I'd be more than happy if anybody knows, you know, family that really, um, you know, wants to watch it if they have a DVD player, which a lot of people do, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to just ship, ship a copy. It's no big deal because, you know, I think that's most important that family understands and, and supports and backs you. Yes. Cause it's a very overwhelming sickness, especially if your whole family is infected at the same time, that's very tricky. I imagine and costly of an endeavor to get better from as well. How is treatment in the state of Florida? Do they, assist you with any kind of insurance help in Florida? I know in PA, we don't get a whole lot of support that way, but I'm not sure about other states. 
Well, um, before I answer that, Anne, it's funny you said Pennsylvania, and I didn't even think about it in our conversation. But my um, my best friend um, right now, we're not talking because of something, uh, but it's stupid. But anyway, she she lived in uh, Pennsylvania. She has she has um, eight children, but one of them was killed in a tragic car accident. But she she knew about my diagnosis with a lot of people get diagnosed with fibromyalgia and that's basically what happened to me um i don't want to lose too many key points here um so anyway she had said sandra i i don't think what they're telling you that you have is is actually what you have you need to get tested for lyme disease and most of us know that getting tested by a local lab if you get you have a positive test you're pretty lucky or you just got you know you just got bit um, with me, I was undiagnosed for two years. And then um, when I did finally get tested with just a regular lab, I don't know, it was lab corp or quest, one or the other. I remember my doctor called me and said that, um, well, good news and bad news. And it was on a Friday, of course. And they said, well, you do have Lyme disease, but you've had it for a while. So um, getting better, you're just going to live with the symptoms. Well, right there is, you know, you're already, you know, negative you don't feel positive you don't have much hope right there i mean when your doctor is telling you you're not going to get there's no there's no cure and we know nothing about it nor are we going to help you so fast forward uh, you know with persistence and you have to have persistence with lyme disease i ended up um finally getting on doxycycline but i had been on it and i was telling you before is um and i'm trying to watch the time we're still good um My doctor, well, before I knew I had Lyme disease, I had, you know, we all have a lot of symptoms and we never really know what they are. And um, so I had ear, like I thought I had ear infections. I was having a lot of MRIs. My son was having MRIs um, for different issues. Um, He had different health issues since he was um, when he was younger, but I have family in Alabama too. So my mother did live there before she passed. So you know, who knows? Alabama's big for ticks. Um, they have their own um, Lyme Association, which a lot of states do. And I'm sure Pennsylvania, I'm sure you have your own. So and then there's ILADS. Um, and then we have a couple of Florida groups as well. Um, so I haven't reached out to anybody really to share my story since it's been so complicated. And I'm still still. um you know, dealing with it because I still have, um, issues from time to time, um, you know, with mostly the full moons. And when I like right now I'm off of medicine and doctors don't realize that you need to be on medicine and not to go cold Turkey off, especially anxiety medicines. So, um, I find helpful, um, you know, more organic methods sometimes help, um, just some good old, I don't know if I could say it, um, marijuana and then gummies, gummies are really good too. Um, THC really kind of messes with my, my brain. So sleep is not effective there. Um, did you have any questions? I don't want to, I know I'm kind of cramming a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. Oh, that's okay. You, we've got time. Um, So I'm just trying to think about some of, I know you had mentioned some of your symptoms. Can you just kind of go through all of them for the listeners so that they understand a little bit more about what your specific symptoms that look like, just in case they have anything that that might resonate with them? Oh, absolutely. Because that's key. Symptoms are key. Um, I'd say the biggest for me was well my first symptom started with um muscle muscle fatigue um especially in my calves and then neck pain and i couldn't sleep so and then i had chest pain and that's when i was going to um a rheumatologist and i was getting injections cuz they had diagnosed me with fibromyalgia uh, originally before i got my actual diagnosis um so she didn't believe it and i even got a letter in the mail stating that she wasn't treating for any of those symptoms um that she treats for fibromyalgia um chronic fatigue um dot 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 everything that goes along with that um only because you know i brought her in my actual 
test results from Igenix, which is the main lab that people, you know, need to get tested from. Insurance um, normally covers it. Um, I just call them. You can just Google it, and if they're in California, um, there's, it's a very easy um, way to get tested. Um, cash, it would cost you two to about two forty, from what I remember, out of pocket to get tested. And it, it's a three day turnaround. You basically get a, a lab kit, and you pay for it. You get a lab kit. You take the um, paper out. You go get. It. Uh, signed by your doctor and if they won't sign it you can go to an urgent care i mean you can get any medical doctor to sign it that you can get to sign it and then send it into igenix with the kit um after you get your blood drawn put it they put the vials back in the kit and it's like um in a box with styrofoam and you send it back um try and send it back no later than Wednesday, get it done on Tuesday, send it Wednesday through FedEx. Um, that way it doesn't just sit over the weekend and then you've just wasted all that um, time and money and you probably won't get a true diagnosis. Um, but with me, I did get diagnosed by um, a regular lab. So I had two diagnoses that were positive. Okay. And so you had a lot of muscle fatigue and then I think you had said ear infections at one point. I know so I think I you mentioned. Was, yeah, what I thought was ear infections. Um, but, um, you know, that I was having MRIs and that's why I was on antibiotics because of all the infections I thought I had. And I was persistent about getting medicine. So, I mean, I still have doxycycline. I mean, it's it's old, but. To me, I have it for an emergency if need be, but I have not needed it. But, and a lot of times when you go on antibiotics, um, for me, it just aggravated symptoms. And I ended up with, when you take a lot of antibiotics, a lot of people know if you don't take probiotics or some people don't know that you can end up with um, candida, which is yeah. what I had. Um, it was all up underneath my chest, all underneath across underneath my boobs. And I'm like a 38 C now. <laughs> but so anyway, um, it was very aggravating. And I homeschooled my son as well. And and um so I homeschooled through this when, with my son having it, um, and he had other health issues. So it really took him a while. And it was my um, eyelids doctor that finally diagnosed it. He was just an older doctor. He was over in Tampa. He's since retired. Um, but there's a lot of good doctors out there. If you just go, there's groups for every state almost. And if you go in the groups and you can Google uh, line groups and um, a lot of them are actually on Facebook. So um, if anybody wants to know about, you know, Florida's group, I know about that. And I know someone that knows a lot about it. And I was telling you about a lot of her symptoms. Um, my symptoms weren't the same as hers. Um, she got it hers from Rhode Island. So I don't know. I think maybe different states. Now, I don't think it really matters. I think it's just all the same. Did you have any questions? Although I, I've heard in the past that uh, Germany, for example, is a lot more advanced with their testing. And so for them, based off of the symptom set that the patient presents with, they can tell you from which part of the Black Forest, for example, the tick has had come from. So they are, I, I guess, regionally... Um, pigeonholing which illness comes from where, which is fascinating to me because I I'm not sure malaria, malaria. I mean, we babesia. could say to pardon. Uh, there's the babesia, which is the same as malaria. I'm just changing hats. My head's yeah. getting hot. Oh, no worries. And um, you know, I could say like things like Powassan virus, for example, is coming more from Hudson Valley area. So, and then oh. um, Lone Star is more in uh. My Texas. understanding, like ocean areas, I'm um, not specifically from Texas, although you think so with the name, but the name. I is just, I just talked to someone from Texas. That's so funny because we were talking about Lyme disease, catfishing and all of everything. And this is why I'm writing a book because I don't mind repeating my story because of how significant it is. And I can't seem to get myself positioned right. So I'm sorry. Oh, um, 
another symptom with uh, I find with Lyme disease or what happened with me, um, I guess getting better or divine healing or whatever you want to call it. But um, with me, there was a lot of fatigue. There was a lot of, um, let's say, different symptoms, quirky symptoms. Um, I didn't have flu symptoms. I didn't have a typical bullseye. And, you know, a lot of doctors are like, well, you don't have a bullseye. It doesn't have to be a big uh, target practice on your back to be, you know, show you that you have Lyme disease. You got to put the whole puzzle together. And that's why ILADS doctors are trained to figure this out. Yes. And so for the listeners who aren't familiar, by the way, she's mentioned ILADS a few times here, but International Lyme and Associated Disease Society. So it's a group of physicians who are trained specifically to be specialists, if you will, in Lyme and tick-borne illness. And it's really beneficial to get yourself to an ILADS physician specifically because of their extensive training in this area versus some doctors who are not as specialized and maybe miss something that could be important or don't quite test for the full spectrum of tick-borne illnesses mm-hmm. because they don't know about it. And that's no. a big, big component. So I'm also curious, Sandra, did you have, do you know, did you have co-infections? I know you mentioned you had candida, which a lot of times will accompany Lyme yes. just because I think our immune systems are left so susceptible for pathogens and things to start taking advantage of us. But did you have other specific uh co-infections that you're aware of definitely um i look um i'm sorry igenix does test for co-infections as well um for me um my my lyme doctor told me basically if you have lyme disease just count count it that you're gonna have co-infections i'm sorry my keeps okay no um so yeah, Bartonella was probably the biggest for me. Um, I also treated with um oh gosh, what was it? Malarone, um, Ativank, um different medicines that were are for um malaria. Okay. Um during COVID, there was a lot of symptoms that were very similar with COVID that was um malaria. And one of the medicines I used to get from um a Canadian pharmacy. Um, I don't know. Am I allowed to mention names of medicine? No, of like a pharmacy that you, uh, you can go to. Uh, I can tell you. You know, just you and I, and then you you'll know what. Yeah, it is. and if somebody's interested, I guess what we could do, Sandra, is if if somebody's really interested that's listening that wants help with these specific. Um, pharmacies potentially in Canada or whatever it is that you were alluding to, um, you can reach out to me and I can get in contact with you to get them that information. Absolutely. That sounds like a plan. Yeah. You're always going to have a backup plan in with Lyme disease. You can't just think that it's one thing um, that you're going to do, you know, because everybody's treated differently. Everybody has different symptoms, um, different co-infections. Some people do not. It depends on how long you've had Lyme. It depends on, um, you know, your stress elements. Um, you know, if you're not dealing with a lot of stress, you may not have a lot of symptoms. For me, um, I didn't have symptoms. I didn't have stress, so I didn't have symptoms for a while. It was when all of a sudden stress popped in. And this was during the market crash during 2008 is when I ended up getting a lot of my symptoms. And I... Uh, ended up going to the emergency room one night because my le- my calf legs were was uh, ironically it was my first symptom of you know the legs that carried me to go from place to place and get me from here to there were the ones that it was the leg muscles just my calves and my neck muscles were tightened up just like now it's like you know where you just feel like you got to stretch your muscles out or get it just have someone rub your muscles um i was on uh, muscle relaxers um i mean i still have a drawer full of medicine um but i don't take anything except for anxiety and sleep and i'm trying to get off of it but unfortunately doctors don't realize that um you know having lyme disease a lot of times you have more anxiety than an, a, just a typical person and my son's been on different medicines too and he's on medicines for a long time now and i was just talking to him and um i made an appointment for him to go see his doctor but he doesn't think 
he does not like doctors, which a lot of people understand with Lyme disease do not like doctors because we're just we're we're just thrown around. It's like, okay, go to this doctor, go to this doctor. And that's why people end up spending so much money because they're trying to figure out what's wrong. Correct. And I know you had touched on that a little bit earlier, but um, from a financial standpoint, um, how has this been for you in terms of fixing yourself? I know how much I spent. I think you had mentioned to me privately how much it spent, but I don't know if you can touch on that a little bit more so people get oh, that part sure. of this. Yeah. Um, just going to plug in here. I think I'm too bad. 63. That was the year I was born was 63. But when I got catfish, I just want to back up a little bit. Um, you know, it took the focus off of my disease. I can't, I can't, um, express this enough. It took my focus off the disease and it, um, it just started making me think about myself and, you know, my happiness and, you know, being sick for 15 years, it was like, Yay, I can get up, I can do this, I can drive 95, which is our interstate. I can drive over a bridge. I can I can go to the beach at 3 30 in the morning and go just watch the moon come up. I could I could deal with a full moon during the month. It's now it's like now I'm back dealing with a lot of stress. For three years I've been dealing with this situation. Not the line, but the catfishing. And I'm starting to now get it under control. And now, ironically, now because it's under control and I don't get the attention I was getting at the time, it kind of, now I'm having kind of symptoms, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay. So then I'm thinking about like emotionally or maybe mentally or psychologically when you're distracted from it it helps to obviously make the symptoms dissipate a bit more that you're not focused on them so much. So a lot, a, a lot. I mean, and I could go out and hang, hang with friends. Um, I met a friend at uh, Walgreens. So she works there and Walgreens over here by me, it's more like a hangout. I mean, people, customers know customers, uh, the customers know the ca the cashier. Um, I go in there. I know, like all the people that work there, the manager, they all know me. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, there's a lot of different elements to it. Yeah. And that feels good when you have a place to go like that. Um, so what I'm thinking for you is like, well, how do we get you busy again, but in a positive way, not in a stressful way so that you are able to continue on and not, um, you know, feel your symptoms so much and to, to be able to continue to live your life in a, in a better space, right? Well, my my key, my key is, and unfortunately, I don't like to rely on medicine. But um, once I get my anxiety medicine and get back on it, because going cold turkey off of anxiety medicine, especially um, clonopin. Um, oh but no, I, that's not know, a good idea at all. No, it, and I've done it before, and so I'm no no stranger to it. Um, just. You know, you just do it because you don't have a choice. Just like when you get Lyme disease and your symptoms, you don't have a choice. You know, it's just, I did want to touch on one important um, treatment. Well, I did multiples. I'll try and um, go by number. Um, first was antibiotic. Um, that kind of really aggravated my symptoms. Um, we spent a lot of money on hyperbarics, um, which we did. Um a couple of different times. We spent a lot of money there. Um, that did not help. It actually aggravated. And it actually, what did they say? That it aggravates malaria, I think, about Babesia, which is the same as malaria, basically, yeah. um, because of the oxygen. So basically, hyperbarics is like um, with deep sea divers. They um, it's called the bends. You go in a machine, you sit in, you lay in it, you stand in it. I mean, they've got places that have like where you can have a bunch of people in there, which I never did that. But we just did it individually. Me and my son did it, okay. and it cost a lot of money, and it did not do anything. It like I said, it just 
made it worse. One, we were away from home. So being away from home, you know, everything I was familiar with, my comfort zones um, was, you know, not not effective. So we, we came home, we didn't finish. We, we did most of the treatments, but we, we missed a few, but that wasn't really a big deal. So, um, I don't want to get too far off a key because I get very, um, OCD is a big thing too with Lyme disease. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. So the hyperbarics, um, hyperbarics I did, oh, herbals, um, if you've ever heard of uh, Nutramedics, um, yep. I would get them from, there's a different website and I'll have to tell you what that is once I think of it, but um, where I would get them generically. Oh, okay. I think I just remembered it. So now I'll, I'll remember so we can, I can tell you. Okay. Um, let's see. And then let's see, after the herbals, um, I probably did antibiotics in between and um, antibiotics was never, you know, the right thing. Um, then, you know, um, oh, a lot of different um, holistic methods, um, different holistic doctors, right frequencies. Um, I have an infrared sauna. I've got a swim spa. Um, I mean, the, the equipment and the stuff that we've purchased, to 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 deal with this um is is pretty um expensive so um and then you know i'll just i'll kind of wrap it up with the last treatment that i did before i got healed well what i say healed um um, was uh, something called bee venom therapy. It's actually from live bees. Um, people have done bee venom therapy for decades, ages, um, but they've uh, abused it because they use it too much. Um, so there's a story on, um, anybody can go on Facebook and I'll tell you the lady's name um, so we don't have it on the podcast unless you want to add it to the podcast. That's up to you. Um, I would say in this instance, since she's open about it and you can look her up and she, yeah, I, I think it's okay. She has a book on um, Amazon. Uh, it's called yeah. the B-Bus, B-Bus Mission. Yeah. Um, her name is Ellie Lobel. Um, she would be more than happy to talk to anybody about this because she went, she had quite a horrific story herself. And she was a, she's a scientist by nature in what she does. Um, but now that she's better with the Lyme disease, um, she's married. She lives in California. She's very happy. Her name is Ellie Lobel, L-O-B-E-L, um, E-L-L-I-E. Um, and she... She did. Oh, you're welcome. She did the B-Bus um, uh, mission, which she would drive around before she got married after she had gotten better. And she would teach people how to do the bee venom therapy, which is from live bees. And you do it. Um, it's a very easy, simple protocol, which is cost effective, um, time effective. You're in control. You don't have to be on antibiotics. As It, it took me... Um, just over three years to finally start feeling symptoms to really go away at a good amount where I felt better. But then again, with stress, it everything just went back downhill. So that was over three years that I did that. And this was prior to the catfishing. So the catfishing, just to sum everything up, really was like my, 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 my healing, um, you know, I say it's a divine healing. It's just everything, you know, happens for a reason. And whatever you believe, um, you know, just believe that whatever it is, is you're doing the best you can do. And don't beat yourself up over it. Um, but anyway, you can go on Facebook, you can friend her and just add my name. Just, you know, she knows me very well. I've met her here in Florida twice. Oh, cool. Um yeah, I had my own beehive and everything. It was really cool. Huh. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah, and it is. So I think I had told you, but you're like one of the only people I've met. I've heard of people using this, but I don't think I've actually ever talked to anybody who specifically did it. So, um, no, 
it's behind closed doors. It's not talked about a lot. Um, a lot of doctors don't know about it. I've had a few people, you know, here and there, because I don't talk about it a lot because it's been a while since I've done it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of times you don't want to talk about everything you've you've done, but you know, like I told you, I don't mind talking about it because, you know, now I'm at a point where I'm ready to share my story. I've told you, I think I've mentioned before, I'm, I am writing a book and I've got 30 handwritten pages, uh, double lined with a line skipped, a uh, publisher that's already interested. So once I start getting feeling better, um, once I get my medicine started back, I next week, hopefully I can go the... Um, library and I can get it um I can t- we'll type it up nice and clean neat and um print it out for I think three cents a page they said so it would be like three dollars or how many pages I don't want it to get really too lengthy but I've already pretty much got the whole story written I just need the final chapter and that's in my brain I just can't I can't put it down on paper yet because it's kind of um it's very personal okay it's hatching in terms of how it needs to come out. Yes, exactly. And this has all been um, part of my, my three year story as well. And yeah. not, not with the hyperbarics or the B venom therapy or any other therapies. This is very unique. This is something that a lot of people are not aware of what it is. Like I was telling you, some people have actually said to me, do you put it in the refrigerator? Like it's wrapped fish that you just bought. No, it's, it, it kind of is because that's, if you go and you reach out to celebrities, they will reach back out to you, but they're not celebrities. They're just people impersonating them, trying to yeah. pretend to be them and trying to get your money. That's right. Um, and the story I told you about the last person that I spoke to, um, the imposter had really made sense to me. Didn't ask for any money. Didn't require anything really um, emotionally, but really kind of brought things kind of to the surface that didn't make sense, now makes sense. So that's another big element of my uh, my journey. Yes. So, and, and as you had said, in a weird way, it's something to kind of be grateful for just because it's allowed you some more space to heal yeah, um, and exactly. to get better. But I certainly when anyone... Like just with like the Lyme stuff, it's like, I wouldn't want anybody to have to repeat that. And I wouldn't, I'm sure you don't want anybody to have to repeat your story of what you've gone through. So by sharing it and talking about it, it helps hopefully other people avoid it or just have more um, knowledge around it to have better outcomes, you know? And so I do appreciate your spending your time here and and sharing more of your story. Um, One last question that I have for you. Yes. Can you tell me what is the best thing that's happened to you as a result of getting Lyme and tick-borne illness? Mm, Yeah, that's really simple. Um, You know, I just generally feel better about myself um, because like I told you, this has really affected the whole family um, and even, you know, um, extended family. You know, there was a lot of issues. My family does not understand about Lyme disease at all. I mean, even over 15 years, nobody's taken the time to and try and understand it. And I've even been told that, you know, um, you know, family was not happy with me because like I would, if I didn't show up for um, holidays or whatever, and they just never understood why, but I, it's not that I didn't, I did. Um, So, you know, I just did the best I could whenever I could. And if I couldn't, that, well, you know, that's, that's it. And the ironic thing is my sister-in-law has lupus. But her mother, before she passed, um, we had talked about Lyme disease and they, she lived here in Florida and in their backyard, it's like a a senior mobile um, community and my dad lived there too. So they would have um, rabbits and squirrels and a lot of other um insects animals can carry Lyme disease which people don't are not aware of um I even talked to a someone had helped me one time because I have a disabled tag which took me years to get um I just didn't want it so I got one from believe it or not my podiatrist 
because I had plantar fasciitis. And that's another thing. And I can wear heels now. I could not wear heels or anything. My feet were so bad. I would get injection. So another symptom is just quirky symptom. It's like the tendons, your muscles, um, your brain fog, um, joint pain. Um, I had where my... um, arthritis in my thumbs uh, I couldn't drive I'd forget where I was going um, my speech I couldn't talk right I was it was like dyslexic in my speech um, so everything is pretty much improved except for you know with stress uh, just and not being on medicine which a lot of people can understand um, going off at cold turkey is not good and during a full moon and is rough yeah yeah, and unfortunately, that happens once a month. Yeah, the pictures. <laughs> I just want to point out because my finger, my fingers going all over the place. The picture behind me happened this morning. There was a dragonfly. My Maine Coon was trying to bring in, and it was still alive. And she's she's so she she's been therapy for me too. I have animals that are um, emotional support animals, yeah. um, which you can do online today or get a psychiatrist to sign a paper. That's what happened to me. So I can basically take her anywhere. And uh, her name's Tanya. She goes with me everywhere. Um, so she, she, she loves to ride. I got a big truck. I couldn't drive. So and my husband would always say, you know, it was like driving Miss Daisy, which, you know, a lot of, you know, the movie, um, I forget who it was, but I can picture them. Morgan Freeman. Yep. He was the driver. Yep. A good movie. Yes. And anyway, so yeah, now I can drive. Um, I can go drive over the um causeways, which is the um bridges going to the beaches. I can drive on our interstate and I have to go to court for something next week, but I won't mention that because <laughs> I could get in trouble. See, that's another thing with Lyme disease is you know, your your whole personality changes and you do what you have to do, especially when if you have to feed your animal, I to me, I'll starve before my animal starves. That's just yeah. the way I am. Yeah. Um, but I didn't finish the story. I just want to point out the dragonfly behind my head. I'll just move over. It it ended up um going on my hand. And to start of this morning with the sun coming up, I have beautiful pictures. Uh, I love to share anything I have. Um, photography has been therapy for me. Um, my animals are therapy. Yeah. I don't know why my watch is going off, but anyway, so um, that's kind of pretty much my story. It's like a lot of stuff that I really touched on. So, you know, not to um, make it too complicated because it's really not complicated, but, um, you know, so there's a lot of information packed in in an hour we did. So we did a good job. Thank you, Ian. Yes. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate it because you did touch Mm -hmm. on some really good things and just making viewers and listeners aware of some other options that are out there to remember the standard two tier testing to remind people is not necessarily the best Um, places like Hygienix, as Sandra had mentioned, um, are much more specialized labs to get you to the right testing. Again, some of the different therapy options that you tried and some different things that worked for you, some things that didn't work for you. Um, the idea of just the financial burden this places on people, how much it can stress families out. And again, another thing you talked about Mm -hmm. was just stress and its role in driving symptoms. Mm -hmm. So if we can possibly eliminate or alleviate stress as much as possible to allow healing to have more space to happen, that's really Mm -hmm. encouraged as Mm -hmm. well. So, so many good things that you've talked about and shared and just brought a better perspective to. I, I have more and just a couple of things I'll add real quick is, um, you know, other things I could do and is I could go to the gym and work out. I can play basketball. Um, I can swim. I can go to the beach. I can go in the ocean. It's that is like so soothing. And my, my one thing I want to point on just to, you know, wrap up everything up is, um, the dragonfly that I was telling you about this morning, um, look for little signs, little symptoms, just little things in life that, you know, show you that, you know, anything is possible. Don't give up and whatever you do, do not, you know, think you have nowhere to turn because there's always people to talk to. So this is having your podcast is excellent to get people to understand that, you know, 
we're not alone in this. That's right. And I appreciate you pointing that out too. And it is, we are in this together. And that is another reason I do this is just to help give us more of a united front and to know that there are people out there just like you who are open and willing to talk to people who are struggling or share some ideas or just give support and have a, a, a kind ear to lend, you know? So we, we do help each other very much in this community. I'm very grateful for that. And I'm well, very welcome. grateful for your help too with this. Oh, Thank you're you. welcome. I, it's my pleasure. With one minute to go or less. Um, yeah. Just want, yeah, I just want to point out that, you know, today, as we talked about with it being Halloween today, the last day of um, October and it being a tough month for me. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people have, are aware of the full moons. But for me, it was just, um, it was tough. And, but I have hope that I know that I'm going to get you know, my medicine and I'm going to get normalized and then I can work on trying to get back off of it the right way um, and not cold turkey. But just look for the little things in life that tell you, you know, you're not alone. There are resources. There's a lot of resources. Um, and having your podcast was just really great for today um, because of it being the last day of the month. And today is not one of my best days. So uh, it's probably the best day to share, you know, how I feel, how I look, um, share my story. Um, Cause I'm not perfect. I really, you know, don't, um, you know, I have days that are almost perfect, but today wasn't the perfect day. So this was like the best day. Because I'd hate to, you know, people to see that, you know, hey, she looks pretty good. What, why is she on this? You know, because I am not a doctor. My dad jokes. He's 91. He lives in Las Vegas. And he jokes. He says, you know, what are you, a doctor? And I'm like, no, dad, but I should be. I could have made a lot of money. Should be, yes. Yes. But, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people uh, know that. Well, thank but, you again, you know, Art, for your time. Again. And You're I will welcome. look forward to sharing this with the public soon. Thank you. Have a really good night. You're very welcome. You too, Anne. Thanks, okay. Sandra. Bye. Bye. Take care. You Bye -bye. too. Thank you.